So the immune system. It's a node stage, right? It's our it's our one node stage of the of the uh, unit. So hang in there. Um, we already talked about viruses and bacteria, um, but you can see here these are bacteria. They are single celled organisms. Um, they are alive and doing their own thing. And these are viruses. So they have um, attacked their own or a different living cell uh, in order to infect that host. But they need that host where the, the bacteria, they are their own being. So you actually have three parts of your immune system. Um, the barriers, so these are just physical barriers. The innate response, um, which is nonspecific and it's quick and fast, and the adaptive response, which is specific to certain pathogens, certain infections. Um, be, but because it is, um, is more specific, it takes longer to adapt. Um, and so this is what happens when these two get um, broken down. So you start up here, um, and then we move down the roll, or down the, down the line. But the first one, Non-specific external barriers. That's pretty um, simple. A, we don't often think of this as your immune system, but your skin protects you from getting um, infected. The people who got staph didn't get staph through their skin. They got staph because their skin got cut, and then that cut, um, even a tiny little like nick, the pathogen was able to get into, infect, and create that. But if we had complete um, skin protection, you, that would be fine. Of course, you have some openings in your body, your mouth, your eyes, your ears, your nose. Um, so those have their own um, barriers as well. And that's mucus. The saliva has some enzymes in it that's supposed to break down infections or break down pathogens. The, the mucus in your nose, it's all sticky. It traps those pathogens so they can't get into your body and they just get stuck in there. Um, the stomach acid inside of your stomach is super, super acidic. Um, and that, that also breaks down things so that pathogens can't get through you. So there's a lot, your body really tries hard to keep stuff out of you. Um, that's why washing your hands, um, not touching your face, not touching your face is one of the best things you can do to keep yourself healthy because your face has so many of those openings um, that uh, are not covered with that first skin barrier that's the most protective. Um, so when big colds are going around, making an effort to not touch your face. Also, if you think, if you really pay attention to how often you touch your face, it can sometimes be a little um, gross or uh, surprising. It's just a lot of natural instincts that we all have. Um, so that's our first barrier. Then we have this innate immune response. We'll go into it more closely. Um, but these are just cells that are floating around in your body and they go after any pathogens that are, or any cells that are not your cells. So this is just, fighting any foreign material. Um, but it's not specific. Um, and because it's not specific, it's not as effective. And many times, this gets overridden. And the pathogens, the virus, the bacteria are able to um, <coughs> reproduce and replicate more quickly than the innate immune response can do. So then you have to have this adaptive immune response. Um, and this is specific to certain pathogens. This is your antibodies. So 
So this is going after, this is where a vaccine will help because it's going after the uh, um, specific virus, like the COVID virus, so that your body has a response. Um, but this takes a little longer, um, which is why it takes our body's time to, to get over a cold. <clears throat> So kind of this is the, an overview of the same thing. The first line, second line, um, third line. Nose hairs, we all have them. It's kind of a gross idea, but what does a nose hair do? It like protects, it protects like actual, um, like means to you, it protects like, um, stuff flowing around the air. Yeah, it's like, it's another, it's not as strong as a, uh, your skin because you wouldn't want your nose to be completely covered up, but it's a way to keep stuff out um, from your nose. And when stuff gets clogged in there, it triggers you to sneeze, um, which expels out um, some of those bacteria. So then second, this is the uh, second line is our innate response. Um, and then the third response are the antibodies, B cells and T cells. Um, don't worry about, all these slides are posted and don't worry about um, writing all of these down, but it goes into a much um, more in-depth of all of the different cells. And you can see there are quite a few different cells that your body has um, ready to go or that it activates and builds. Um, all part of your, all considered your white blood cells, which is why when you get, if you were to get a blood test when you're sick, your white blood cells would, levels would be really activated, elevated in order to have enough um, fighters to, to battle whatever pathogen. All um, of these white blood cells are made from stem cells. Um, they are made in the bone marrow, which we'll get to um, when we cover the skeletal system, where's the bone marrow? Inside your bones. Yeah, it's inside your bones. Um, and so you have these, these stem cells. Can you rem um, remember what a stem cell is? You see? It's the cell that can like become any thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, um, it's undifferentiated, but it can go into a variety of things where when a red blood cell becomes only a red blood cell, um, but where one of these cells becomes only a white blood cell, these can become lots of different things. Um, and that's where they're being used, or they're being, um, there's a lot of medical trials going on um, and potential therapies with stem cells because they can turn into different things like, hey, I need some more immune system cells, or I need a ner neuron, which is a nerve system cell that doesn't regenerate. So lots of different things that they can do. So moving on, any questions so far? Let me know if I'm going too quickly. The first cell of the innate immune system is non- <coughs> um, specific immune cell that's the first line after the after those physical barriers um, is called a phagocyte there are multiple kinds macrophages and neutrophils and phagocytes actually just go around and eat foreign particles um, so these cells are kind of, these images are kind of hard to see, but they're um, electron microscope images and they go, they kind of engulf a particle and eat it. And don't, so, yes? Don't they like um, kill themselves once they're like, done with them? Right? Exactly. They kill themselves. Um, neutrophils specifically, did anyone get to that part in the puzzles, what neutrophils do? Yeah, puzzles are due tonight, right? One's due tonight. No, there wasn't one yesterday. It's due tonight, like at 11 o'clock. Yeah. They're all due by the end of the weekend. But. Um, they'll say eat it and then, like, explode, basically. 
basically. And they explode, and what do they explode into? What do they turn into? Oh, pus. Pus, yeah. So a lot of the mucus um, and inflammation that you see, when you, that you feel when you first get sick, that is your immune system. That's not the pathogen or the infection that you're fighting. That's not the bacteria. That's your body's response to it. So they build pus. Um, your body produces um, an inflammatory response when there's pathogens. Inflammatory response is a way um, causes swelling um, and brings in fluid and ultimately the goal of inflammation is to activate the immune system. It's your body calling in all of those cells. Hey, we need help. Um, infection, we got somebody that's invading us. We need help. Um, so we're activating the immune system. Um, but that can also be the part that makes you feel really uh, badly. When your sinuses get inflamed, they swell up, your airways swell up, there's less room for air to go into through them. Um, that can give that additional, that like pressure feeling you have in your head when you're first sick. Um, you have more mucus because your body's um, trying to stop some of these pathogens as well as the pus from these neutrophils um, eating the, the bacteria or viruses and exploding. Um, so the innate in your immune system is fighting that part. And they are just going for anything that is not your own cell. And so this image shows all these darker purple ones are macrophages. Um, and they're going around. And you can see them kind of starting to engulf certain bits. Um, and then afterwards, they blow up, explode, leave this debris. Your body needs to um, get rid of it. And because your body needs to get rid of it, that's one of the reasons that drinking extra fluids while you are sick is really important because it flushes out more of that. It brings fluid through your bloodstream, keeps your bloodstream um, and all of your, um, your, throughout your body really well hydrated and it's constantly flushing them, bringing it to the kidneys, um, which is your filtration system to get rid of that stuff. Um, so extra, extra water while you're sick is important in that way to, to flush everything out um, and give your body the ability to produce the mucus that is helpful for you to fight it, even if it's uncomfortable um, during the time. But again, if you just drink water, it's going to be the problem. It has to come out. It has to come out, but if you were only to drink water, you can get water poisoning. You can get, um, yeah, you're, you're essentially having too much water. So you do want to have the electrolytes, and that's where um, certain things like a, an emergency has more in it than just water. Like put salt in your water. A little salt in your water helps in that way. So you're having some of those electrolytes to keep that osmotic, osmotic balance in your body so that your body's not having, um, has enough of the sodium, potassium, calcium that's necessary for muscle contraction, nervous system action, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> So this diagram is just showing, here's a leukocyte, um, which is a form of neutrophil um, going in, ingesting the bacteria, it expands, lyses, which just means breaks up, um, and then explodes. They also, when they explode, they also release what's called a cytokine. Did anyone during COVID hear of cytokines? They were in the news more then. Some of the people who are having really bad COVID um, uh, symptoms was what was called, was they were um, hypothesizing it was from what was called a cytokine storm. Your body was producing too many of these. Certain people's bodies were producing too many cytokines. Um, and that was creating 
a higher um, inflammatory, more symptoms um, and worse symptoms. So it was actually your body's, certain people's body's responses. Um, I'm just going to do one more. Um, the other part of your innate immune system is a mast cell. Mast cells release histamine um, and stimulate inflammation response. So these are cells that are circulating, circulating um, and they're saying, hey, there's, uh, there's foreign invaders in here. We're going to stimulate the inflama inflammation response, the inflammatory response, try to get um, more <coughs> immune system cells coming in to the body. Um, and they, one of the things they do to cause that is they release histamine. Has anyone heard of histamine before? Yeah. Yeah. Where have you heard of it? Yeah. Antihistamines. Antihistamines. What's an antihistamine? It is an anti-inflammatory. Um, do you know a, a, like a more generic brand name? Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen's not one, unfortunately, but good guess. Um, Benadryl. When do you take Benadryl? You get stuff by a yeah, you, get, you take Benadryl for allergic reactions, actually. Um, so people who are allergic to bee stings, people who are, have really bad um, pollen allergies. An EpiPen is actually an even um, stronger dose, and that's adrenaline, um, to okay. like really shoot up your body's system to fight that. Um, is, but how does adrenaline help your body to like, recover super fast? It goes into fight or flight mode, um, which we'll talk about when we go to the nervous system, but it eventually, essentially like ramps up your body to to go into action. Like um, so it increases your heart rate. Um, it increases your blood pressure. So your blood's pumping. Um, it dilates your blood vessel or your, some of your blood or your airways. And so you're getting um, more oxygen in. It dilates your pupils. So you get more light. Um, and all of that is made so that your body's like ready to go and ready for action. Could you take adrenaline I wonder if it's, I don't know about no, this, right but because it all seems like it would help with performance. <laughs> it does. And you, that's kind of when you guys are doing, um, what is it? The, the, you mentioned this in your term and the arousal control, oh, yeah, um, <laughs> but arousal <laughs> control is essentially getting your body to the appropriate level they, of adrenaline. Um, and I hadn't really thought about that before, but it's a good point. Um, but um, I, I'd be curious to know if it's on a banned substance list. For some people, if you had adrenaline and you took too much adrenaline, you wouldn't be able to ski a course. Like, your body would just be, like, too amped up. Is it bad for you? Like, yeah, adrenaline bad for you, or is it good for you? Adrenaline, like, what'd you say? It is a natural chemical, um, and it's similar to cortisol, which is another stress hormone. And what they're finding is that it's good in small doses, but bad in long term. Like, it's really high energy demands to use. So, short term stress is good. Long term stress is bad. Um, Your body makes it. Your body does make so adrenaline. Yep, and your body makes cortisol when you're stressed. Um, it's often why people get no, sick actually. after like a bigger event. So kind of the letdown, or you might feel really tired after like a oh, like a big exciting event. Um, you can not sleep the night before a ski race because you're really amped up um, and excited for the race, and still ski really well. But then afterwards, you're like, oh, my God, I'm really tired from that um, because in the short term. But long term, um, it does have deleterious effects on the body, which is why long term stress um, can be bad. Same kind of similar to our blood pressure example, because adrenaline increases your blood pressure. How does, um, how does adrenaline like, make it like things that less painful? Because I know like, you get injured and you have adrenaline. Like, you have adrenaline. Like, it's like not painful at all. 
Yeah, it would be an interesting one to look into. My guess is it must like, um, like hinder the, nerve impulses. Then you're just like really focused on something else, right? Mm -hmm. It kind of like put you in a shot. And it puts you into, it can if you're um, too much. Um, and that's why, so <laughs> if you have a bee sting or you're, you're going to, you're going to go into anaphylactic shock, your airways would shut down. You take adrenaline, the EpiPen is essentially just a shot of adrenaline, but it's recommended then that they, those people get medical care um, and go to a doctor's and uh, to the hospital and um, are treated there and helped to get back down from that. It's not like a shoot, take your EpiPen and then go ski a race, I think. Be like a, a little, just like a tiny, yeah, you have to have a micro, micro dosing, yeah. the EpiPen. I'm, yeah. I don't know. I doubt that it's, um, I doubt that it's on the banned substance list because it would be really hard to test for since everybody produces it naturally and everyone has their own I mean, I don't think amounts can, of it. I, I think you don't, are you allowed to buy um, EpiPens? Like, I don't think you are unless you have, like, a scribe. Yeah. You can't, yeah. Get, you can't, like, or, like, a certain school, like, has to have an EpiPen. Like, you can't just go to the lobby. No, no, it's, it's, a, it's a so prescription. You could buy it somewhere else. You could definitely buy it on the the the, um, sorry, sorry. the black market somewhere. I'm what sure. Is, what is that? Like, what is the liquid inside of it? Um. So adrenaline is a hormone, and how do they? How do they I don't know it? how they suspend. <laughs> it's often hormones. You can. Um, these are good questions. You can produce synthetically. Okay. So um, it's not a natural one that they're they're using, but they. Um, create a synthetic version of it um, that mimics the same uh, response as the normal one. Yeah. Uh, um, but, um, so back to this, mast cells release histamine um, and histamine supports this uh, immune system response and this inflammatory response to start calling in all of the things. Um, but an allergic reaction is actually just producing too much histamine and needing to take that. Um, your body, your immune system actually is finding something. So when you have a pollen allergy, your body says, I have, or it sees a, a, the pollen molecule and thinks it's a foreign invader that's harmful. And so it attacks that and over attacks it. Um, so it's almost an autoimmune um, response where it's overreacting to something that's not that, not that harmful. Um, <clears throat> what is it called when your body attacks the cells that like, aren't matched to your body cells? That's um, an autoimmune disease. So an autoimmune disease is when your body, your immune system attacks yourself. And there are different autoimmune diseases, like multiple sclerosis is more of a muscular one. There are some nervous system ones. But anytime your body attacks itself, overreacts in that way, um, that's what happens. Um, but you can see, so good question. Um, this is the uh, activated histamine. It's getting your body ready for that fight or flight response um, in order to fight the infection short term. Um, this is the mast cell resting and then here it's released all of its histamine um, molecules to go out and stimulate your body for action. Okay, Sounds good. Have fun up there. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, I'll do these do you get a time for your for running? I better get a time. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last part of the innate immune response, a fever. What's the fever doing? Body temperature, virus, virus. Yep, Vi viruses, um, proteins, it um, inactivates those proteins and kills it that way. So this is the last part um, of that innate response is the fever. And this innate response is happening within hours of your body being infected. This is happening immediately. The next one that we're going to talk about is the adaptive response. And this one takes days. Um, 
This is the specific response that is much more effective, but it takes longer to do because you have to build specific B and T cells. Lymphocyte is just a, another word for uh, um, an immune system, white blood cells. The T's and the B's are the two different cells of the adaptive response. So there are B cells, memory cells, helper T cells, and killer T cells or cytotoxic T cells, um, and then antibodies, which are made by the B cells. So these are all the cells of the um, adaptive immune system. All of these are specific cells where these are proteins that are produced actually by the B cells. Yeah. So the first Ed puzzle covers your innate immune system, and the second two cover the adaptive immune system, which is a little bit more complex. One of the important things to remember, though, is the innate is nonspecific. It's just going after any foreign cell um, where the adaptive is specific. You will have B cells that are for the COVID virus or B cells for the flu virus, B cells um, for staph, et cetera. Um, to go skip through this. This is kind of giving an overview of the B cells um, and the T cells, but we'll go into each one specifically. The first one is the B cells. These make and display antibodies. Antibodies are um, a protein that is specific to a certain antigen. An antigen is a tag on a, on a cell. So your, your cells have antigens. Your cells have tags that say, this is my cell. Um, and then you have a cell that might be somebody else, a foreign cell that has a different antigen. And so the B cells look for those foreign cells and they make antibodies that tag these specific antigens. And what these, so this would be an antigen, this is um, number three is the pathogen. This would be your uh, virus. Um, number two, this is the antigen. That's a tag that's on it. Um, and this is a specific antibody that matches <coughs> that tag. Um, a different, these would be different antigens, or these ones would be, these square ones would be different antigens that would need a different antibody. And so what the antibodies do is they essentially cover all the tag, cover all the antigens um, and make this cell ineffective. It can no longer go in and fight or it can no, no longer go in and um, infect new cells. It can't replicate. So you kind of see it's like, it's like surrounded the microbe or the pathogen um, and closing it in. Um, giving it a, surrounding it and making it ineffective. Um, this is one for snake venom, um, and it essentially makes it so that the, the snake venom can't bind to other cells um, in order to uh, create its deleterious effects. So questions on antibodies, antigens? Antibody-antigen can get confusing. 
Um, I think you guys talked about it last year with the blood, the blood types, and we talked about it briefly this year. Um, and so those, the antibodies, B cells job from here, these B cells, their job is to make antibodies. Once they've made those antibodies, then you have them. So then you have antibodies to COVID-19. If you've got, had COVID-19 or if you had the COVID vaccine, then if you get infected again, your body is ready to fight it. What does the virus do though to fight back? Change. It changes, it mutates. So that's why there's like a new JN um, uh, variant of the COVID vaccine. So then we might need, a, sometimes those same antibodies will work, other times you need new ones. Um, then we have a, quite a few different T cells. One is a helper T cell. And this, that one is just, it activates B cells and it activates T cells. So its job is to get these guys going and get these guys going when a virus um, invades. And one of the important things that it does as well as getting the B cells and T cells going is the helper T cells are the ones that say, stop, we're done, we've killed it. Um, so having effective helper T cells prevents some of those um, over responses because it can say, okay, we fought this virus, we're done. Um, rather than continuing on and over fighting the virus and continuing to destroy your body by overreacting. Um, and the cytotoxic T cells, which is the last one, cytotoxic or killer T cells. These are the ones that go out and actually kill um, the infected cells, either through um, so these are, these are the killers. They're similar to like the, ma the, the macrophages, the phagocytes, all of those ones in the innate system, but they are much more effective. They're going pointed towards a certain one and their um, killing ability is stronger, better, and um, because of that, it'll be more likely than these macrophages or other cells that are going through. Those are the ones that like put the, the enzymes in. Exactly, and that's what's happening right there. Um, it releases, they can release chemicals in order to kill the, the infected cells. Um, and so that's what they're, that's how they have a more effective way. Rather than just eating the cells, they can kill, um, kill those. So this kind of goes through the, um, you got the virus, it affects the cells. Once it gets past the innate system, it um, causes the T helper cells to get going. The B T cells get the B cells going, which produce antibodies. And they also get the uh, cytotoxic T cells going to kill the cells. Questions on this? And like Spider just said, one of the ways that they do that is they, um, release enzymes into the infected cells that cause apoptosis. Who knows what apoptosis is? This was in one of the egg puzzles. Explosion, cell death. Um, but this one right here will give a, um, the timeline. So if you are the first time that you are exposed, it takes a few days for your adaptive immune system to get going. But then if you were exposed again, um, your body would be able to fight it really quickly. But then over time, that response wears down. Even if the virus or um, doesn't change at all, if it's the exact same virus, over time, those antibodies that are circulating, those specific um, B and T cells, they start to wear down 
And so over time, you may still have a mild re reinfection, but your body gets back up to speed more quickly. Um, and that's also why sometimes you need to get a re booster of a, vi of a vaccine um, because that has worn off over the time. Something like tetanus or um, MMR, those ones, measles, bumps, and rubella. Questions on this? The last thing I wanted to cover um, is the difference between, I'll just write it right in here, passive and active um, immunity from your adaptive response. Does anyone know the difference between this? It was covered briefly in one of the later end puzzles, but if you haven't gotten to those. So active immunity comes when we get, when we build those antibodies ourselves. So active is we build antibodies. Um, and so this happens from an infection. Or what would be the other way we would build an, an antibody? Um, vaccine. Yeah, exactly, a vaccine, um, even if you're not actually getting sick, vaccination. Passive is when you are given antibodies. You want to know times when you'd be given antibodies? When you're really sick. Yeah, there were um, antibody treatments um, for COVID. You could get antibodies um, that were produced. Um, Another time that would happen? Are certain antibodies better than others or not? Like, are the passive ones better than the active ones? Or are they all the same? active, they're all the same antibodies. The active are better because they last a lot longer. Um, the passive, because it's not us producing them, they end up getting just flushed out. So they, they're there for a bit, but then they um, don't last and your body doesn't keep building them. Um, The other time, we, the major time for passive immunity is childbirth and breastfeeding. Babies don't have a functioning immune system yet. Um, and so there's an evolutionary mechanism in order to um, help babies survive and be able to fight infections before their own immune system goes. Um, and that's during childbirth, mother's antibodies are given to the baby. Um, and breastfeeding also provides antibodies to the baby um, that don't last forever. And so if a mother had COVID-19 while she was breastfeeding a baby, the baby would get some of those antibodies, but they wouldn't last as long as they do in the mother. Um, would the, uh, the mother be like at risk of more diseases and stuff while breastfeeding because she's giving antibodies to the baby? No, I think you're able to produce, it's a small amount um, that you have in there. But good question. Any questions? All right, we covered a lot there, so we will stop there. Great job, um, great questions. Keep checking your plates, um, and then we'll touch base on Monday whether or not it's actually working or we need to figure out a new solution. Um, I'll look into seeing if we can borrow an incubator from somewhere as well. Um, but do the Ed Puzzles as well for homework. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome, have a great weekend. Those were my five. Oh yeah, thank you, great. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome, have a good weekend. You're welcome.